Hello students, now we will discuss about cockroach mouth parts. In case of cockroach, mouth parts are chewing and biting type. They bite the foot and they chew the foot. All mouth parts are arranged in a uh, means arrangement that they can move but their arrangement is around the mouth. All mouth parts <coughs> are movable we will write movable appendages and are around the mouth <coughs> these mouth parts bear one pair of mandibles mandibles are two in number next it has one labrum labrum is also called upper lip this is labrum Labrum is attached to clypus. And the structure which is near to mandibles, but it is in the middle part. It is nothing but tongue or hypopharynx. <coughs> it is also called as lingua. Tongue. Or hypopharynx. It is also called as lingua. One single tongue. Next, labium or lower lip. This one. But it is considered initially as a pair, but later it is fused to form one single structure called as labium. Here will be labium. Labium is also termed as secondary or second maxillae. Mouth parts also bear one pair of maxillary pulps. Around which type of structure all these mouth parts are distributed? All these mouth parts are covering pre-oral cavity. Next is about labrum. Labrum is arranged in a vertical manner and it is a rectangular plate. It is <coughs> attached to clypus but it should be able to move. So we say it is movably attached to the clypus. What is function of labrum or labrum is also called as upper lip. It holds the food and it helps in tasting. We are telling it is helping in tasting means it might be having some tasting receptors or tasting sensory structures that are called as gustatory sensilla. So first one, labrum. Labrum is vertically and Vertically arranged. Labrum is a rectangular plate. It is movably arranged with the clypus. This labrum has Tasting receptors, which are also called as gustatory sensilla. This gustatory sensilla 
are tasting receptors they taste the food next function is function is they hold the food and taste the food next is mandibles about mandibles mandibles are a pair of mandibles mandibles are unjointed chitinous and they are triangular in shape they are movably attached to special type of muscles called as adductor and abductor muscles on the inner side means in the middle region they have specially arranged chitinous teeth like structures which are used for cutting of food and grinding of food next is about mandibles so mandibles are triangular they are not jointed with each other they are arranged separately on either side means on left and right side of the body so we say they are unjointed chitinous mandibles on the inner side they have teeth for cutting the same cutting is used with a word called as incision or in incising and grinding food mandibles are movably we said that labrum is movably attached with that of clypeus clypeus like that mandibles are they are moving with the help of special muscles called as adductor and abductor muscles movement of these mandibles is an horizontal way means this will be moving in this direction to cut this will be moving in this direction so we say that the movement of mandibles is horizontal in nature next about first maxillary so now we, we will talk about this structure this one and this and this one so these are in a pair means they are two in number and see if you take this complete structure to take it as the base it is having one branch here other branch here when any type of structure is having such type of two branching then a term is given like biramus and biramus in a nature biramus means having two branches this structure which is holding those two branches is called as protopodoid the inner branch is called as endopodoid this one the outer this red color uh, structure it is called as exopodoid first maxillary is divided into it is of three parts first one protopodoid in case of protopodoid again the structure is divided into two parts 
here this one is called as cardo and this one is called as stipes this one has cardo and the stipes now we'll give labeling this one cardo this one stipes The protopodite is attached to the inner structure called as endopodite. Endopodite is again divided into two parts. Two parts, the labium structure, there is one structure uh, that is called as lesin. And here uh, will be hood like galea. Next, second one, endopodite. Endopodite has hood like. Galea. So we will write Galea, this one. Galea. And the inner structure called Lesina. Next, third part is Exopodite. Has now the structure exopodite is divided into five different segments like so we can say it is pentamerous type of structure and has five segmented here we have written galea and lesina segmented maxillary pulps This one, it is a forceps like structure which is holding the food. So we can say Lesina is forceps, you can also or pincer like. Next, what is use of this first maxillary? First maxillary, it holds the food and brings food to mandibles. Holds and brings food to mandibles. Maxillary pulps are attached to the junction of endopodite and protopodite to a special sclerite called as palpi fur. So, no place here. Palpi fur. That we will write. Maxillary pulps. Attached to sclerite. Palpi fur. Next about labium or lower lip. It is also termed as second maxilla. <clears throat> Actually it is a pair of or a few structures are fused to form one single labium. These are a pair and are fused. These have actually their location is behind the first maxillary behind and we we'll write here and are behind first maxillary that is this one.
so this labium has upper submentum middle mentum these are all parts we said here a paid and fused so what are these paid structures and inner prementum or lower prementum it is lower so here it has labial parts attached to arised from palpiger here maxillary parts are five segmented but labial parts are three segmented so here we can see this is the structure this is submentum and this is mentum and this is prementum this structure prementum it has the innermost structure called as glossae and paraglossae here this is paraglossae and this is glossae g l o s s a e glossae the innermost one the smaller one is glossy and the big structure this is paraglossy what are these both structures glossy is resembling is comparable to the lesini forceps like structure so glossy is equal to lesini paraglossy is equal to hood like galea the distal end of prementum has glossy and paraglossy two different structures glossy is similar to lesini that is for six like structure paraglossae is equal to that of galea now we will write what is the location or a position of this glossae and paraglossae the distal end to prementum has glossy similar to lesini and paraglossy similar to or comparable to gilly could like gilly glossy and paraglossy together are called as ligula but here we used another term called as lingua that is nothing but tongue now above the at the distal area of the prementum glossy and paraglossy together are called as ligula next coming to hypopharynx hypopharynx is a rod like and groove like uh, it is having sclerites groove like sclerites it is connected to the salivary duct with help of efferent ducts so tongue is rod like connected to salivary ducts connected to salivary ducts 
So these are mouth parts of cockroach.